turning your own handwriting into a font is definitely one of the best ways to add a unique touch to a lot of things, but especially your videos and your graphics. So today I'm gonna walk you through the process that I use to create my own font, which is surprisingly much more simple than you might expect. And then after that, I'll explain why this has been really revolutionary to my workflow. And when I talk about creating your own font, I'm talking about literally drawing out letters and characters and then putting them together in a way so when you type, kind of like this right here, it is a font in your own handwriting or whatever style you might want. I did my own handwriting because that was what was easiest for me. The way that I did it was I used a website called Calligrapher. This video is not sponsored. I'm not associated with them in any way, shape or form. There is a free option if you wanna get started and see how it works, but it's really limited in terms of the number of characters that you can use. You can kind of just do the alphabet, but if you wanna do numbers or special symbols or variations of characters, you'll need to pay to do that. But currently at the time I'm recording this video, pricing is super fair. It's $8 a month. And you probably don't need to sign up forever. You can sign up, pay $8 for one month, make a few fonts, and then you're probably done because chances are you're not making a brand new font every day of the year. Although I guess having that many fonts would be fantastic. Okay. So once you create your account, the way to get started is to create a template and print it out. And what they mean by a template is basically a sheet of the different characters that you're going to turn into a font. And right here, again, with the paid super baller $8 a month version of Calligrapher. I have all of these different things I can choose from to add to a template. You can go down and add in some different scripts if you wanna move on beyond just traditional English. Now, depending on how you're gonna use this font, that's going to tell you what you wanna include. But I definitely recommend including some currency, some ligatures, some punctuation, and maybe some basic symbols. The reason for that is even if you don't plan on using those symbols a lot, you never know how you're gonna use your font in the future. I use mine with Ecamm Live, so when I'm doing a live stream and a comment pops up on stream, it's in this font. And when I was using the free version that didn't have a lot of characters, if somebody typed something that had like a number in it or a special character, it would be my cool individual custom font and then it would just be like a Helvetica 2 or something. Once you create a font, you can go back in and add more stuff to it. So it's not a one-time thing. The font will stay in your library and you can adjust it, add it, change it from there on out. Now ligatures, despite what you might think, it's not like when someone comes up with their phone and you're like, let me look at your phone over there real quick. A ligature is basically a combination of common letters. So things like E-R-E, S-C-H, M-E-N-T, letters that often appear together in different words. And so that's a ligature. Instead of writing just one character, you'll actually write out that whole little part. And it just sort of helps things look a little more natural, add some variation to the text because of the goal, I think when you're making a handwritten font is to have it not look like it's being typed out. And if every character looks exactly the same, even if it is in your own handwriting, it's gonna break that illusion and it's gonna make things kind of just look like a typed out font. So for the sake of saving paper, I'm only gonna print out a couple characters, but once you add everything you want to your template, all you need to do is click on download template. You can name it whatever you want. And then I usually like to have the draw helplines right there. You could put characters as a background, but my handwriting is so like crooked and strange that it would be more distracting than anything. And then your template will be printed out on a sheet that looks like this, which just has little squares that have the different character that you need to draw within that square. There are the helplines there, but don't worry, you don't have to be perfect when drawing out your font. This is something I had to learn because I was really putting so much pressure on myself, like, oh my God, I'm drawing the A. This is how the A is going to look. You have capitals and lowercase letters. I like using these little markers. This is a, what, a Papermate flare pen. These are really great, but you can use anything you want. Black or dark ink is probably the best way to go. Don't put too much pressure on yourself because if you end up drawing something that you don't like for one of the letters, you can just replace that single character later. You don't have to do it all at once and make it perfect. Totally up to you, you know, how much like regular quick handwriting you want this to look like or how ornamental or decorative or if you want to really draw out and like hand letter and detail everything, you can make it as simple or as complex as you want depending on what you're comfortable with. This is so overexposed, but here's my template that I have drawn. And once you have this done, depending on how many things you've printed out, you might have to do several sheets. But once this is done, you just scan it. You can use your photo scanner if your printer like has a built-in scanner or you have a photo scanner, or you can use a scanning app on a phone. You just want it to be a decent quality scan. And then these QR codes are what help the website figure out how to turn this into a font. So once you've got your sheets scanned, you can then go to My Fonts and click on Upload Template. And that's going to let you just upload the file. You can do multiple pages at once. 
and then it will turn it into a font. So here's my font right here, the one I actually made. You can see all the different characters. There's some useful punctuation, there's some numbers, there's all of the letters, there's different math symbols and just things that I thought might pop up at some time in addition to some ligatures. Now one thing you might notice is if I go to these different characters up here, you see this little number in a circle, some say three, one, three. That's how many variations of that character there are. So what I did was I printed out my template several times and I just did it over and over again and I kept re-uploading it and when you re-upload it, it will ask you, do you want to make this a new font or combine it with an existing one? And if you combine it, then that just means you now have variations of different characters. So if I click on the letter M, for example, we can see there's three different versions of M. And then you have options for each character. So for example, if one of them is just terrible and you don't wanna use it, you can just trash it and delete it. You can make one the default character, so that's the one that it's gonna always go to when you first type in that letter. And then you can also adjust the baseline and the size. So right here, for example, this letter A, if it were too big, sometimes the letters are scanned in and if you, you know, if you weren't perfect in how you wrote it, it might be too big or too small, so you can change the size right here. You can also change the baseline, which is sort of how high or low it fits in your text. My natural handwriting is kind of like jaggedy. It's not perfectly straight. And so I purposely went through each letter and made sure to adjust them so that way it it has kind of that natural bumpiness that my actual writing does. Same thing with all of these. So even the ligatures can have different variants, which again, just really helps things to look their absolute best. Now you can go in and take things a step further. So if I click on edit character, I can go in and sort of zoom in and use these different brushes to either add or erase. So I could add something like that to the character. I could click on eraser and then I can subtract stuff. So if you have a weird part, like you accidentally made a mistake, you can probably just erase that or you could even use a brush to kind of fill things in and make it look exactly how you want. You can do that for every single character if you want. You do have the option to edit font details. So right here you can sort of make some basic adjustments and you can add metadata. So if you're doing different versions of the font, if you wanna add in anything about your licensing, if you're gonna share it with other people, you can do that right here so it will be included if someone downloads and installs that font. And then when you're done, you just click build font and build font lets you see how everything looks when it's in like a sentence or a statement or something there. So you can kind of see if something's looking weird, if you wanna change something. And if you're happy with the way that everything looks, then right up here, you can download your font file. In this case, I have two different versions, a TTF or an OTF. I don't know WTF, the difference between them. So I just stick with TTF because that's what I've always used when I download fonts in the past. In my case, on my Mac, when I click on the TTF file, it's right here and I can just click install font and then it will be installed. If you have any open applications, like you wanna use it with Photoshop or Final Cut, you need to close those and reopen them before the font will be available. And that's all there is to it. And if you wanna share that file, that TTF or that OTF file, that's all you need to upload or send to someone. They're very, very small files. They don't take a lot of space, super easy to email or put on a website or whatever you might want. Put them in an online store and sell your fonts. So that's the process for creating the font. The steps are really simple. The part that takes a lot of time is just writing out the characters, scanning them, doing different variations, and then fine tuning everything before it looks exactly the way you want, and then you're happy with it and you wanna install it and use it. Now here's why this has been absolutely game changing for me. A pointless point of pride for me is that for the past five years, five years, there has not been a typed letter on my YouTube channel or in a thumbnail. I started just doing stuff by hand using my iPad and Procreate back in 2017 when I started my channel. So I thought it was a fun way to help things just look a little bit more unique, because after all, you can't spell custom without Tom, which is just a fact, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Now, if you have an iPad and you don't have Procreate, get Procreate. It is absolutely the best app money you can pay for on an iPad. But for all this time, what I've done when I needed to do letters and videos or thumbnails is I put the image or I have a file here that's called YouTube titles and thumbnails. And on this file here, I have like a lot of the different stuff that I have typed out over time or written. This font here just is Helvetica, but I just sort of trace Helvetica and then scribble it in by hand, which is a, not a great use of my time, but for some reason it's important to me. But every time I wanna add in titles to a video or a stream, I have to come here and write them out using the Apple Pencil. I have some videos and streams all about how to do that and how I approach that, but that is very time consuming because every time I'm editing a video and I think, 
oh, I need to put something on screen right here. Let's go over here, do this, send the PNG file over here, add it in. It's not that that takes a lot of time, but it's definitely some friction in the workflow. And where it really started to be a pain point was a while back, I started adding channel supporter names to the end of my videos. So that's right, it's all your fault, people who support me. And at first, I thought it would just be a really fun idea to have everybody's names hand-drawn at the end of the videos. And I think that this is really fun, but it became a total, total pain every time I needed to change something. If somebody joined, if somebody left, I had to erase and move and cut and paste. And keeping these in alphabetical order was pretty much impossible, so at the end of the videos, people couldn't find their names because they didn't even know where to look. So by doing this, now what I can do in Photoshop, I just have a document that's called Channel Supporters, and that's where I can easily add everybody's names just from a spreadsheet, just copy and paste. It's alphabetical order. It's not 100% perfect because if if you look here how absolutely perfect the edges of these rows are that's kind of a giveaway that this is not totally hand done and that it's probably typed out but it still looks really nice and it's easy for people to find their names if they want to now in thumbnails like right now this is the thumbnail for this video that you're watching right now the part that says make your own that is the font literally i can't tell the difference between that and if i had written that out custom for this specific thumbnail. So now I can just start typing, hi, these are words, exclamation point. It's not fitting the space really well, so I can just arrow down to another line, and now I've got text there. Sometimes you might need to make things fit a little better. For example, right now I can do Command T within Photoshop. I can change the alignment. Maybe I want to make these centered instead of left or right justified. Sometimes you might need to adjust the character spacing, but that's really easy to do in pretty much any application like this. So there I did it in Photoshop. I can change the line spacing. And that looks pretty natural. And if you look at this specific example, there are three different letter E's, but they are all different. They all look the same style because they're my handwriting, but each E looks different. Whereas if they looked exactly the same, it would kind of be a giveaway that this is not handwritten and it's a typed font. Now in an application like Final Cut Pro, and I believe this is pretty much how it would work in other things like Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, you can do something very similar. I'll create the project for this video, so we'll call this fonts. I don't have the footage from this yet, so I'm just gonna add in this random time-lapse footage that I have right here. But now if I want to add in the font on this time-lapse, I can just create a normal title. I usually just stick with a basic title because I'm so basic. And now I can quickly and easily change the scale. I can change the position just like I normally would even when it was a PNG, but it works just like any other font or any other title that you're using within Final Cut. And what I can do here is there's line spacing and tracking. So same thing in Photoshop. If I had multiple lines, I could adjust the distance between those. And tracking, I can adjust the character tracking. So even though your font might be scanned, finished, and uploaded, you still have the ability to kind of like adjust it and fine tune it for the specific use that you're using it for, which again, just helps it feel a little more custom and a little bit more personalized and unique. And so for me, going from having to hand draw absolutely everything to being able to just type things out and add titles has really been a game changer for my workflow because it's just so much, oh shoot, I was doing a screen recording. Please tell me you saved. Yay, okay, it's all there, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> because now it's so much quicker and easier for me to add titles and text to graphics and videos and basically everything in a really unique way. And what I've learned recently, kind of more than I ever realized, is if you have a workflow that you work in a lot, any place that you can reduce friction or speed things up really makes a huge difference overall. And for me, this has definitely been one of those things. And I think it's also helped my videos to be better because I'm not as hesitant to add in titles anymore. If I need to make a point that clarifies something, it's just so easy. And so that just helps me to be more comfortable taking more opportunities to clarify things if I need to within my videos, which is probably a better thing for everybody involved. Speaking of things that are great for everyone involved, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through these beautiful typed hand done letters on Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about my process for designing thumbnails and other elements for my channel, check out these videos right here.